Ladies and gentlemen, let's try game instead of comedy. We're going to be discussing a rumour that's floating around at the moment regarding AMC's Zen. And indeed, the fact of the matter is, it is on course to being a highly competitive chip, at least according to these rumours. We'll discuss the source in just a moment. And it is cited to meet all expectations with no significant bottlenecks. These are a few choice quotes. So, this does pop up on realworldtech.com, a forum which is discussing a lot of different um, applications, technology, and engineering. Now, I would like to point out that this is, of course, not confirmed by AMD, so I would like to, as usual, say for you to take this with a large pinch of salt. However, these claims do come at a rather choice time, we will discuss that in just a second, but suffice to say, of course, we know multiple details with Zen have at least been leaked multiple times from different sources or confirmed by AMD themselves, for example, the fact that the Zen is now being taped out, the fact that the Zen is going to have at least a 40% gain over the previous generation CPUs, we've known that for some time. Anyway, so... These comments say that regarding the Zen performance, a guy who worked for AMD, at least according to his LinkedIn profile, and who, as he claims, worked on designing level 2 cache for Zen and K12, said that the focus was being competitive against Intel. He no longer works there, but apparently his old colleague still works there, said that Zen chips have already been tested and so far have met all expectation and haven't found any significant bottlenecks. Apparently, they haven't finalized the specifications for the clocks and the TDP, but their partner and server market are, quote, very excited. It's not much detail, but I think if the problems are having only two AGUs, it would count as significant bottleneck. Also, this is my first post, blah, 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 blah. Now... A day or two ago, I did report that Ada64 changelog is now including Zen Summit Ridge as well as Raven Ridge processors. So the Summit Ridge, of course, would be the CPUs, whereas Raven Ridge would be the APUs, which we know that uh, AMD have been planning that for some time. Additionally, we have also known through various leaks and patches that the IPC, the floating point throughput, and other details of the core are looking decidedly impressive and the fact of the matter is according to a lot of these leaks and reports the chips are going to be much more intel like in their performance and much more intel like in for example their instruction set compute performance and basically speaking they are considerably let's just say they're a considerable diversion a considerable different direction from what amd had been doing before with, for example, the bulldozer lineup, and it's more akin to what they were doing back in the early Athlon days, as I've mentioned multiple times. Suffice to say, according to various leaks and patches that were popping up uh, just a short time ago, um, these actually appeared um, in, I believe it was September time, if memory serves, but they basically point to the fact that each core will have four ALUs, two AGUs, and four uh, FPs. So ALU, of course, is arithmetic logic units. AGU is address generation unit. And FP, once again, is short for floating point unit. Now, in a nutshell, this means that the actual processor is going to be an absolute monster when it comes to handling SIMD. That's S-I-M-D. And we've already discussed multiple times over, so I don't want to re-bore you about, for example, the fact that... Um, it's going to easily be able to process a single 256-bit AVX instruction per cycle, as opposed to previously where it was going to be able to handle 128 with, let's say, the bulldozer f uh, family, which, you know, isn't bad or anything like that. But the fact of the matter is, these processors are going to be absolute monsters. Now, I would like to just quickly finalize and say that, obviously, we don't know if these details are accurate in regards to you know whether they are going to meet expectation and the fact of the matter is at this point and this is something that i speculated in let's say three four five weeks ago they are probably still trying to dial in the clock speeds because at the moment they probably don't have a representative uh, sample size in other words they haven't had enough processors enough silicon to actually test to figure out 
okay, what's the limits that we can actually push this thing? Now, obviously, some of this does come to yields, some of it does come to binning. So, in a short way of putting this, let's, for the sake of argument, say that back in the day when you had the old processors, um, you know, when everyone was trying to go to the one gigahertz mark. So, let's just take things real simple. Not all cores come out as equal. Generally speaking, what happens is the manufacturers are shooting for the high end, but invariably you're going to get lower end processors simply because those cores, which are not capable of running at, let's say, for the sake of argument, 1 gigahertz, they may be capable of running quite happily at, let's say, 800 megahertz with a respectable amount of voltage. In this case, with multi core processors, it's very much the same deal. How many processors are coming out with, let's say, four cores enabled out of the modules, or let's say how many of them are running with, let's say, less cache, or let's say for the sake of argument that AMD are shooting for three gigahertz um, for the high end, I'm obviously just pulling that on my ass, for we know they could be shooting for 8,000 megahertz, we don't know, but let's just say they're shooting for three gigahertz for the sake of argument, it's probably going to be more around the four mark, but let's just say three gigahertz, well, it's possible that they might have a large majority of their processors, or maybe a small minority of their processors, we just don't know, running at, let's say, 2.5 or 2.2, and therefore they can start speed bidding those. It's becoming a lot more common, however, now, um, with the advent, of course, of multi-cores, rather than just scaling up the clock speed, it's becoming a lot more common to either reduce the amount of cache, or reduce, let's say, the um, possibility of multi-threading, Intel, of course, do this by simply not enabling uh, hyper-threading on their processors or disabling the number of cores or what have you. And generally speaking, although sometimes they are slightly different architectures, generally that's how it all comes to be. And once again, obviously, I've somewhat simplified this whole process because speed binning itself is becoming considerably more complicated. And this is particularly true in the world of GPUs. But... I can imagine that AMD right now are doing a lot of testing, trying to figure out what speeds they can get, what comfortable, what speeds they can get at a comfortable um, TDP. In other words, how much heat does it generate, how much voltage does it actually take for that, so they can actually start providing those details, those guidelines for manufacturers. For example, let's say for the sake of argument that it's running at, I'm just going to pull, figure out my butt once again, one volt to run at three gigahertz. Well. You know, is there a significant drop-off if you're running at, let's say, 2.4 gigahertz? Does it require, like, I don't know, 0 0.9 volts for the sake of argument? You know, and this, all this stuff is very important because that scaling is going to come very, very much in handy when, obviously, they start to tr try to really crank out production and really start to, well, be competitive in the CPU division. Once again... I would highly encourage if anyone is interested in this stuff to do a little bit of research, maybe at least look on Wikipedia and have a look at binning slash yields, um, the basic process of manufacturer, uh, manufacturing, excuse me, because it is quite interesting stuff. But for the sake of this video, I wanted to at least give you a simplified overview on how this works so you can kind of understand what is going on possibly right now. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.